Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you on the Bright Side. We welcome your phone calls at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. If you have questions or comments about the longevity products, our true skin health products, formulations, ingredients, something you may have heard about or read about, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, we want to hear from you at 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the Bright Side or recommended on the Bright Side, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com and order longevity products right off the website. You can also click on the Join the Team link to start a longevity business. If you're an entrepreneur or you like the entrepreneur lifestyle, if you want to work out of your home and work as many or as few hours as you like, if you want to earn your own thank you checks for helping spread the word about pow the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. If you have benefited from nutritional supplementation in your life and you want to pay it forward, if you're the kind of person that just likes dealing with health and dealing, helping people deal with their health issues at the most fundamental level there is, that is the level of good health and wellness, 844-236, I'm sorry, 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 is the phone number for the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business. You can also click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com to start a longevity business all for a one-time $25 fee. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side. We have been talking about the importance of food processing energy release. It's all about energy, as we've said so many times, and the way energy gets into a cell is through food. Food is crushed up into its constituent particles, the amino acids, the vitamins, the minerals, the uh, fatty acids, the glucose, and these constituent particles, for the most part, facilitate energy production at the level of a cell. And that's why food processing is so important, and that's why digestion is so important, and that's why we talk about digestion all the time on this program. Last we spoke, we were talking about the stomach and the role the stomach plays in digestion. Stomach actually has two, there's two phases of stomach processing of food. One is the disintegration phase. The stomach grinds things up and mechanically crushes food up. And then there's the dissolution phase, and that's where acid comes in. It's in the stomach where the bulk of the crushing up of food takes place, but it's not where all of the crushing up of food takes place. Some of it has, has to happen in the mouth. It's also the stomach where the dissolution phase largely takes place. But again, not all of the dissolution of foods, the dissolving of foods and the releasing of nutrients is about the stomach. Some of it is about the brain and some of it is about the mouth. Just chewing your food can help uh, break down, can help chemically, in addition to mechanically, break down foods and just thinking about foods will help stimulate the production of digestive juices. It's actually called the cephalic phase of digestion. Cephalic meaning the head phase of digestion. There's three phases in the digestive process, or I should say in the secretion of acid 
process. One is the cephalic phase, and then there's the gastric phase, which takes place in the stomach, and then there's the intestinal phase. So all three of these systems have to be working. That's why you want to think about your food. Think about eating. Focus on your meal. That's why you don't want to be eating in meetings or eating in the car or eating uh, when you're watching TV or eating when you're reading. Eating, uh, eating when you're distracted can reduce the amount of secretion. Up to 30% of your acid secretion is uh, stimulated by the anticipation of eating, by the smell of eating, by the thought of eating, and also by the taste in your mouth. So if you're really interested in bumping up acid, and we'll talk about why that's more important than dropping, uh, the, than uh, suppressing acid production. If you're really interested in bumping up acid production, you may want to focus on the cephalic phase. That is thinking about food, paying attention to food, tasting your food, as much as focusing on using a hydrochloric acid supplements or apple cider vinegar or all the other things we talk about for bumping up acid production. So you've got your two phases, uh, you, you've got your two processes, I should say. In the stomach, you've got the crushing up process, you've got the dissolving process. You eat your food, you crush it up in your mouth, you think about your food, it drops into the stomach, the stomach secretes more acid, the stomach mechanically crushes it up. At this point, the food has become something called chyme, C-H-Y-M-E, and chyme is really, if you've, if you've vomited, you know what chyme looks like, because most of the time we vomit, we're vomiting up chyme, and that acid kind of, that acid taste that vomit has is, based, don't mean to be gross here, but that's basically what we're talking about here when we talk about chyme. And also, by the way, chyme has a liquidy quality, and this is why drinking water with meals is important. I say that because there is this myth that is perpetuated by people who do not understand the digestive process that you're not supposed to drink water with your meals or drink liquids with your meals. The more you can tell this for, you can see the benefits for yourself of drinking liquids and drinking waters with your meals because you'll find that you're satisfied much quicker when you have some water with your meals. Now, truly we're supposed to get water and food, we're supposed to be eating water-rich food, but we don't really do that. Most of the foods we eat are not well hydrated. Cooking, of course, will uh, cause a dehydration of food. It will uh, cause water to evaporate. And to the extent that you cook your food, the more dehydrated it is, the more important it is that you drink liquids with your meals. And also enjoy soups with your meals. Soup and, and actually enjoy soups as your meals. Enjoy soups and stews as your meals. These are wonderful ways to get your nutrients part, uh, for a lot of reasons. The, the, nutrients are the nutrients from the food are partially dissolved. Soups and, and stews are, in, in essence, pre-digested food. But also, you're going to get more liquid. You're going to get more water with your foods when you ingest them in soup form or stew form. Now, if you're making soups and stews, you want to add your vegetables at the very end because it is true that you're going to lose nutrients to the extent that you cook your food. So, you don't really want to cook it too much and you want to add things at the very end that don't need to be cooked, things like the veggies. So when you're making your bone soup, for example, add the veggies at the very end. Or if you're making a, a vegetable soup, add the veggies at the very end so you don't have to overcook them. Nonetheless, the liquidy portion of your soups and your stews will facilitate the digestive process. And oh, by the way, don't worry about diluting your acid or your uh, digestive juices or diluting the acid. That's not going to happen. As I say, the food is supposed to be liquefied. The way the stomach works is it's working on liquefied food. So the gastric acids and the gastric juices and the enzymes are, are, are they're, they're, uh, they're used to or they're supposed to be uh, working in a liquid medium, in a, in a watery type of medium. So you're not going to be diluting your digestive juices. That's not really a very biologically sound thing to say or think, thing to think. So the acidity of the chyme is important. Once the chyme drops into the small intestines, uh, small intestine, the uh, acid level is responsible for a couple things. Number one, the acidity triggers the secretion of bile and the secretion of pancreatic enzymes. And those pancreatic enzymes are super duper important for the digestive process, just as or more important than stomach enzymes. So using pancreatic enzyme supplements is a wonderful, wonderful digestive health strategy. You can get in the health food stores something called pancreatin. Um, and anyway, the uh, secretion of pancreatic enzymes and the secretion of bile depends on the acidity of chyme, and the acidity of chyme also does something else that's very important. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben.
844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at benfuchsarchives.com. Also, brightsideben.com. Got a search engine up as well as news stories and blog posts at brightsideben.com. And also, uh, criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com. You can purchase all your favorite longevity products off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com, including your ultimate enzymes and Beyond Tangy Tangerine and Healthy Start Pack and Ultimate Nightly Essence and Fucoid Z. All at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also click on the Join the Team link and start a longevity business off the websites. For a one-time $25 fee, you can be in business for yourself. If you're an entrepreneur, it's a great business opportunity. If you're health-minded, if you're a health professional, or if you're just health-minded, it's a great business opportunity. And if you just want to make a little extra income, it's a great business opportunity as well. Click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also um, call 866-735-2470 for more information. All right, so we're talking about the acidity, the acid that's really so important for the digestive process. Uh, and I say that because it's, I think it's important to recognize because the number one best-selling class of drugs in this country after aspirin is an acids. So clearly we got a misunderstanding. If acid is so darn important and we're all taking an acids, clearly we got some kind of miscommunication or misunderstanding about what the body is trying to tell us. The acidity level of the chyme, the food that's in the stomach is number one important because of, uh, it triggers the acidity in the chyme triggers digestive juices downstream. But number two, uh, if chyme is not acidic enough, Food will drop into the small intestine too rapidly. The acidity of the chyme, one of its roles is to inhibit stomach emptying, to slow down stomach emptying. It's one of the ways the intestine realizes that there's food. So it's such a beautiful system when you think about it. The food is, the chyme is acid. It drops into the intestine and that acidity tells the intestine to suppress the uh, delivery of more chyme so that the intestine has a chance to process it. It's a negative feedback kind of system. Acid tells the intestine to tell the stomach to stop putting food in it, to stop putting a chyme in it. That way the intestine can catch up. If chyme is dropping into the food too, into the small intestine too rapidly, this can create a burden on the small intestine's absorptive cells and cells will, uh, uh, nutrients will not get absorbed into the cells. Quoting from the book Physiology of the Gastrointestinal Tract, which is a really powerful and profound and, and very complicated textbook about GI and digestive health. Quote, the orderly delivery of gastric chyme to the duodenum, that's the intestine, at a rate that does not overload the digestive and absorptive functions of the small intestine is another function that requires integration of uh, gastric motility, that is, of, stom- of the stomach. There has to be a way for the intestine to communicate to the stomach. And it communicates based on the acid level, the chyme. If there's no acid in the chyme or there's low acid in the chyme, it's not going to happen. And food's going to drop too quickly into the small intestine, and that can lead to malnourishment and malnutrition. And this is why supplements can be so helpful. If you have any kind of issue with your digestive health, especially at the level of the stomach. Let me say that again. That's so important. If you're dealing with hypochlorhydria, achlorhydria, that is low stomach acid, and many people are, bad breath is a sign of low stomach acid. Sweat, a stinky sweat can be a low sign of stomach, a sign of low stomach acid. If you're reacting uh, to a specific supplements. Have you ever felt nauseous after you take your supplements on an empty stomach? That's a sign that you may not be, uh, uh, well, I should say, if you're reacting to vitamin supplements in general, that's a sign that you may not be making enough stomach acid. If you take them on an empty stomach, obviously you don't have any stomach acid. And that's why people get nauseous when they take them on an empty stomach. 
Well, anyway, what I'm saying is all this can result in malnourishment. And by using supplements with your food, you can help support nutritional, uh, the nutritional content of the blood and ultimately into the cells, even if you're dealing with low stomach acid. Of course, giving yourself stomach acid can be helpful. Apple cider vinegar, using stomach bitters, talk about that here in a second. Bottom line is acidity in the stomach is absolutely critical. And given the best-selling nature of over-the-counter drugs like Nexium and Prilosec and Zantac and Tagamet, we can see we got a serious misunderstanding about how this whole digestive, digestive process works. And likely we're paying a health price for our ignorance. This is why you'll read periodically every few months, oh, proton pump inhibitors, that's the, the high newfangled acid suppressants that you can get over the counter, like Prilosec and Nexium. You read about these drugs as being uh, associated with Alzheimer's disease or osteoporosis or kidney disease. Basically, these kinds of drugs are associated with just the body disintegrating. That's what calcification is. That's what dementia is. That's what kidney issues are. The body will disintegrate when you've been taking long uh, uh, PPIs, proton pump inhibitors, long term, chronically. It's, it's one thing to take them once in a while, but many people are on them for life. Aside from acidifying uh, chyme and preparing it for digestion downstream, acid is also important and also plays a role in killing bacteria. It plays a role in breaking down proteins. Acid's important for the absorption of minerals and also the absorption of vitamin B12 and other B vitamins. Acid's important for activating the enzymes. None of this stuff's going to happen as effectively if you're taking Nexium or Prilosec or Zantac or Tagamet. If you're going to take an antacid, probably the best one to take is Tums, but even then, there's no good antacid and I don't recommend them at all. Once in a while, if you're absolutely miserable, perhaps, but certainly not for long term. And keep in mind, heartburn is often caused by low stomach acid. So suppression of the stomach acid over the long term isn't going to help your heartburn anyway. In any case, heartburn is, should be considered as a stress issue. It has something to do with uh, the microbiome. It has something to do with a a, a low stomach acid. It has something to do with a weakness at, at the level of the sphincter, which can be caused by stress hormone, cortisol. It has something to do with specific foods. But basically what you're talking about, if you have heartburn, esophageal reflux disease, as they call it now, GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease, you want to consider it as a stress, as a sign of stress. Not just talking about psychological stress, by the way. I'm talking about physiologic burden. Something is burdening the body. And that's so important because so many of the health challenges that we just drug ourselves for, over the counter or otherwise, are really just the sign of a body that's in distress. A heartburn is no different. And any digestive problem is no different. It's a sign of a body in distress. And what do you do when a body's in distress? What should we do when a body's in distress? Remove the stressor. Basically, the stressor, if you have heartburn or GERD, is going to be a food or it's going to be a type of food. The stressor can also be deficiencies in certain substances like stomach acid or nutrients for that matter. If you have heartburn, if you have GERD, rather than take an axiom, you might want to experiment with boosting stomach acid. Betaine, HCL drops, apple cider vinegar. Make sure you're getting your electrolytes. Eat fermented foods, sauerkraut. Do you know high quality fat can also have a stimulating effect on acid, making sure the ketogenic diet is a great way because protein also helps stimulate digestive juices and acids. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. on the bright side and we have lines open at 844-236-6010 844-236-6010 we're talking about uh, acid acidity in the digestive tract so important because most of us have the exact wrong idea about how to take care of our digestive health when we have things like heartburn you need stomach acid make sure you're getting enough salt focus on fermented foods eat high quality fats it's been shown that High quality fats, or fats in general, have a, uh, can boost stomach acid production. Start your meals off with a little bit of fat. Start your meals off with something called stomach bitters, or anything bitter for that matter. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Uh, chew your food. Avoid antacids, especially after meals. 
If you take an antacid after meals, what, what do you think that's telling your body? That's the craziest thing to do if you understand the importance of acid is to eat meals, eat some food, and then take an antacid. Chewing your food, chewing is the first step in digestion, in the digestive process, the cephalic phase, acid begins to be secreted in the mouth in response to the action of chewing. Make sure you're uh, uh, focusing or, or focusing, uh, being mindful of each bite of food. Just being mindful about the food, just smelling the food, just tasting the food will suppress your appetite. This is why food, uh, fast food producers will soften their food. You ever notice how soft Boston chicken is? Or a McDonald's hamburger is? The bun, you ever notice how soft the bun is? That's because if you don't taste your food, if it goes down your gullet really quickly, you're going to eat more of it. Food, produ food producers have a, a, uh, a concept they call slip, food slip. They want foods to slip and slide down your esophagus really quickly. So you don't even have to chew it. Because if you don't chew it, you're going to eat more of it. Chewing takes work. Try it. Try finding a food that's really, really chewy. Notice that you're not going to want to eat as much of it. Jerky, for example. Beef jerky. See how much beef jerky you could really eat. It gets tiresome after a while just chewing it because signals are being sent to your brain. Hey, we got enough stuff going on here. By the way, gum can have the same effect. Chewing gum can have the same effect. These are all ways that we can hack into our digestive system so we can be better. And speaking of better, eating your bitters will make you better. Eating your bitters at the start of a meal will help boost stomach acid production. We'll talk about that tomorrow on The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. I've got a couple of interesting stories here. Speaking of di the digestive system, this is from uh, the, uh, where is this from? The BBC. A new bladder made from my cells gave me my life back. Luke Masella is one of 10 people alive walking around with a replacement gallbladder that has been grown from his own cells. How do you like that? Luke had a condition called spina bifida, which is a terrible nutritional deficiency issue, mo mother nutritional deficiency issue that results in babies being born with a gap in their spine. Really terrible, terrible health challenge, considering especially it's, it's all you need is a little folic acid to prevent it. That's, why, that's the reason why moms are told to take folic acid and pre prenatal vitamins are used, is to prevent spinal bifida. Anyway, uh, this kid, this poor kid, had to have a replacement gallbladder, had a malfunctioning gallbladder by the time he was 10 years old. And uh, they had to take it out. And what they did is they put a new gallbladder in him that was made from his own cells. How cool is that? It was actually bioprinted with a printing machine, a 3D, uh, a 3D printer that was modified to produce biological tissue based on this kid's own cells. They ended up printing him a gallbladder. I, only, I don't read this story because it has anything to do with health. Well, it has a little bit to do with health. It's just amazing what we can do with the, uh, to fix the human body. Do you know uh, fake meat made from cells, cellular meat, is coming out supposedly by the end of the year, certainly by the beginning of next year, you'll be able to buy faux meat. This is how technology is merging with biology as well as health. Bioprinting your own gallbladder. Now, if you have a gallbladder problem, don't wait to have a, it, uh, don't have it taken out because you think you're going to have a new one bioprinted for you. That's probably not going to happen for a while. If you do have a gallbladder issue, that's a reason to watch the kind of foods you're eating. It really boils, all boils down to burdening the body with stressors, whether those stressors are something you're putting into the body or those stressors are something that is not getting into the body. Whenever I talk about stress, I know people think psychological stress and emotional stress. This is really, really important to understand that physiologic stressors, stressors on cells from physiologic reasons, are critical players when it comes to health, uh, health and wellness or the lack thereof. The less physiologic stressors you have after a certain point, only you need a little bit of physiologic stress, but the less you have after you meet that certain threshold point, the healthier you will be, the lower your risk for disease, and the longer you're gonna live. There's only two kinds of stressors. There's the wrong things getting in and the right stuff not. And that really boils all of health all, that, all of uh, our prescription drugs and specialists and doctors and, and uh, insurance companies and hospitals and 
the vast majority of our healthcare challenges can be boiled down to the wrong stuff getting in, the right stuff not. And unless you're an IV drug user, or you're smoking cigarettes, or you're abusing drugs or alcohol, for the most part, the wrong stuff getting in is food. And the right stuff not getting in is nutrition. And you could pop, maybe throw oxygen in there, but for simplicity's sake, it's basically nutrition. You're talking the wrong stuff getting in, that has to do with the wrong stuff we're eating. You're talking the right stuff not getting in. That, counts, that has to do with the, uh, uh, with the foods we're eating as well. It all boils down to the foods, not to mention the fact that at the level of the digestive system, you've got absorption of nutrients and or absorption of toxicity. If you understand that all health challenges have to do with stressors on the body, you can see why it's so darn important to control your food intake, eat less food, watch the kind of foods you're eating and connect your, your, whatever your health challenge is, whether it's acne or atherosclerosis to specific foods that you're eating and you can tell by digestive health and then get yourself on a good nutritional supplement program that features the mighty 90 essential nutrients, but also things like digestive enzymes and probiotics and apple cider vinegar, etc. And speaking of supplementation, you guys have probably all, all know about cannabinoids by now. If you've been listening to this program, cannabinoids are plant molecules that are exactly the same as molecules, I should say, very, very similar to molecules that our body makes. Cannabinoids are found in plants like hops and clove and, uh, and cinnamon and hemp or marijuana, and cannabinoids are found in your brain, and they're found in your digestive system, and they're found in your skin, and they're found in every cell of your body, which makes these things really, really, potentially anyway, helpful and beneficial for good health. And it turns out that not a day is going by without us learning about how cannabinoids can be important for health. Oh, by the way, tomorrow, Sanjeev Javia, formulator of the Hemp FX products for Longevity, will be our guest, and we'll be talking about his three, uh, Longevity's three Hemp FX product, which uh, he formulated, Hemp FX form, a Hemp FX Uplift for Mood Enhancement Capsules, Hemp FX Relax Tincture for Sleep, and Hemp FX Soothe, uh, Topical Soothing Cream. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Uh, I had one story I was going to read about cannabinoids. Uh, I think we have to take a break here. This is about cannabinoids and the brain actually cannabinoids for patients who have Alzheimer's disease or any dementia for that matter. We'll talk about that when we come back from a break and take your phone calls as well. We've got lines open, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. side and we do have lines open for you. I'm going to just do one story here that I thought was interesting about cannabinoids and then we'll get your calls. We've got uh, lots of lines open and if you're on hold, just hang on. We'll get you uh, as soon as I just read this real quick. Tomorrow we'll be talking to Sanjeev Javia, the formulator of the Hemp FX products for longevity, Hemp FX Uplift for mood, Hemp FX Relax for sleep, and Hemp FX Soothe for muscle aches and pain. CBD is so important for lots of different things. Cannabinoids. Cannabinoids are the family tetrahydrocannabinoid or tetrahydrocannabinol. THC is the famous one that gets you high. But one of the cannabinoids, or I should say a section or a family of the cannabinoids, a subfamily of the cannabinoids are called cannabidiols. There's lots of cannabidiols, but there's some that uh, specifically are good for all kinds of health issues, including brain health, ironically. How cool is that? There are substances that are made by the pl uh, hemp plant that are important for your brain, for brain health. They're being used for to treat dementia, Alzheimer's disease. Multiple studies have shown that there are benefits uh, from the cannabinoids, whether you're talking phytocannabinoids, plant cannabinoids, the cannabinoids that are uh, found naturally in the brain, or synthetic cannabinoids that are found that are made in plants. People get high for a reason because it affects their brain, but you don't have to get high and you don't have to be intoxicated to get the benefits of cannabinoids for brain health. They've been used for seizure disorders, by the way, for a lot of years. In fact, that's where, they're, that's where they got their, moan, their, their uh, claim to fame is from treating seizure disorders. Cannabinoids are found throughout the nervous system in the brain. This is from the uh, journal, oh, this is from the Salk Institute. Cannabinoids, oh, I think I read this actually. I'll read it again. Aging and uh, the journal Aging and Mechanisms of Disease. Cannabinoids remove plaque forming Alzheimer's proteins 
from brain cells. I think that's so amazing that the cannabinoids can be used for mental health issues to improve cognition, to improve the way we think, considering that uh, everybody kind of giggles when they hear about cannabinoids for medicine because they think about getting high. Ironies abound sometimes in the world of health and nutrition. All right, eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number, and we do have lines open. Let's see if I can get my computer to work here. We'll get to Richard in Florida. Good morning, Richard. Uh, good morning, Ben. Um, yesterday, my wife went to her eye doctor because she was suspecting maybe she had a cataract, and he examined her eyes, and he did confirm that she did have a cataract that she would be ready for surgery if she wanted it. But the only thing is, during the examination, he found out that she has, I think it's called uh, zonual deficiency or weakness. Zonulin? And, uh, In the intestine uh, you're talking about? No, this is the eyes. I, I know zonulin is a protein in the intestine, but tell me about the eye. It's zonule. It's a small uh-huh. band okay. of fibrous tissue that basically connects the part of the lens with the other Got parts it. of the eye, the iris and the cilia. The zonule. Body. You're talking the about zonule. the zonule. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's yeah. okay. That's okay. Yeah, and, so it is. And, it's uh, a tight... It's a tight little band that uh, connects part, part, two parts of the eye, we'll call it that, and it's made up of fibers. He said it's breaking down? He said it's a, it's a weakness, and he said it's very fragile, so that the risk of cataract surgery, he's concerned about that. I don't blame him. Because cause other problems. Yeah. Now, I know from what I read that it's basically, there's a lot of connective tissue. That, no, not a, lot of, of, not a lot of, it is connective tissue. Okay. That little band connects. It's a, that little band's a connector. Well, you see that you, if you read up on it, if you read, it sounds like you were reading up on it, it, you hear the word connect, right? Right. It connects. It's connective tissue, literally. Okay? And, but here's the interesting okay. thing, and this is what we talk about in this program all the time. When the connective tissue breaks down, it doesn't just break down in the eye. It breaks down, breaks down everywhere. You follow me? Okay. So yes. basically, she's, her connective tissue is breaking down. She's at higher risk for prolapses and hernias and ruptures and higher risk for uh, gum disease and higher risk for uh, cardiovascular disease, higher risk for uh, cholesterol deposits and plaques, higher risk for osteoporosis, higher risk for wrinkles. How old is she? She's 60. Okay. Is, is she lean, built lean? Uh, no. Okay. No, so she, she's not, she's, she's curvy? Overweight. She's overweight. Okay. But I mean, is, she, yeah. is her bone structure lean? Not overweight, not her weight, but is her bone structure no, lean? No. Big she's bone structure. Pretty big bone. I mean, she actually, okay. this is what they thought was a cause of this problem is she had a fall. She hit her back of the head. She slipped and fell. She was knocked out for a while. And, uh, and, and he thinks that the trauma may have caused Cause he's not a, That's because he's not a chemist. That's because he doesn't understand chemistry. Okay. Her body is deteriorating okay. secondary to sugar and cortisol. And, and nutritional okay. deficiency, but they're all related. So when you're overweight and you're big boned on top of that, usually you're secreting high amounts of estrogen. And if you're not clearing that properly, you have the toxic estrogen that builds up. You also have the, the uh, uh, element of cortisol or stress hormone at play. Those are your two, those are your two uh, uh, points of attack. Blood sugar, or I should say estrogen, blood sugar, and cortisol. Three points of attack. Estrogen, blood sugar, and cortisol. Those are the three now places you want to work. She had a hysterectomy. She had a hysterectomy. Okay, well, that's, that's going to mess things up even further. She, is she, is okay. she constipated? Is she holding on to is luggage in the intestine? Some, sometimes. Okay. All that's going to compromise her, her uh, estrogen, um, estrogen excretion and slow down estrogen metabolism. I'd be working with bile salts, digestive enzymes, fiber. Do you hear what, this has nothing to do with the eyes, supposedly. Okay. You follow me? You see how this is the, yes. that everything I'm talking about is not the eye. I'm talking about working on estrogen, insulin, and cortisol, and that means digestive health first and foremost. All right. So you want to eliminate problem foods. You want to have her eating, uh, going ketogenic if possible. More protein, more fat, and less carbohydrates, less sugar. She's probably a sugar eater, sugar craver, because usually when you have these three hormones at play, you're hypoglycemic. So you crave sugar. Mm-hmm. So she's going to want to work on, uh, in addition to excreting. Excreting, uh, helping her body excrete uh, estrogen with fiber and bile salts and digestive enzymes and probiotics. She's also going to wor- want to work on the kind of food she eats, more fat, more protein, um, also bone broth, vitamin C, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. And for everybody listening who's listening for the first time to this program, see how we're not working with the eye. 
everybody on planet Earth that you go to is going to tell you to go to an eye doctor. You're going to go see the, uh, an eye specialist for this, this uh, zonule deficiency, as you describe it. But it's not an eye problem or a zonule problem. It's a connective tissue problem, which is secondary to the uh, malnourishment and the, those three hormones that we just talked about. So bone broth protein, use our collagen recovery complex, uh, vitamin C, uh, amino acids, glutamine, MSM sulfur. These are all strategies for building connective tissue. The good news is she'll strengthen her zonule and she'll also strengthen her blood vessels and her bones and her entire mm -hmm. body. And she'll have, have wonderful anti-aging benefits with all of these strategies. Slow deep breathing, anything she could do to lower her cortisol, pregnenolone, I would be getting on pregnenolone, P-R-E-G-N-E-N-O-L-O-N-E. -E -E. She'll know she's on the right track when she's losing body fat. And if you get her to the gym and do resistance training, that'll speed everything up. So you'll, okay. if, she get, if she can start doing some workouts to build the connective tissue everywhere in the body, because when the connective tissue builds in one part of the body, it builds everywhere. So anything she can do to build her connective tissue and lose weight will show her she's, I'm sorry, uh, build muscle and lose weight will show her she's on the right track. You follow me? When she loses yeah. weight and when she changes the way she, her cravings for sugary foods, that's another thing. When she does this correctly, she won't crave the sweets as much or the sugary foods. Now, she'll have to start the ball rolling by, with a little discipline where she just doesn't eat them even though she craves them or she replaces them with protein or replaces them with glutamine or improves her digestion. When you improve your digestion, by the way, you'll find you're craving sugar less. So when she does all these things and she's craving sugar less, she'll know she's on the right track. Follow me? Gotcha. So, so yeah. craving sugar less, losing weight, building muscle, these are all things that will not only help her eye, but they'll help her entire body, they'll help her longevity, and they'll help her psychologically too. She'll feel better about herself. This all works as would one also, holistic health picture. Go ahead. Would this also improve uh, reducing the cataracts or removing? You know, well, the cataracts are a sign of damage. And uh, okay. it's kind of like a crack in your windshield, your eye shield, if you will. And those right. are not going to go away necessarily. But they will okay. uh, strengthen, you can strengthen the zonule. I don't know okay. that you can necessarily improve cataracts once they're there. I have heard of that happening, but I can't speak definitively because I'm not sure how that would work mechanistically. So I don't know, and I would t tend to doubt that that's possible. Uh, but it can strengthen the right. zonule for sure. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay, good. Thank you. I hope, I, I hope that helps. Thanks so much for your call. Appreciate it. Uh, and that's okay. it. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, take care, Richard. All right. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for listening to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Tomorrow we'll be talking to Sanjeev Javia, formulator of the Hemp FX products and a good friend of mine also. Uh, the Hemp FX products are uh, the new hemp line, uh, hemp product line available for longevity. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products. And if you want to start a longevity business, you can also call 866-735-2470. And don't forget to take a look at our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We will talk to you all later. Bye for now.